The film begins in San Francisco in 1933, where a child in a mask sneaks into a museum to observe ancient artifacts. Among them is Tonto, a respected figure of the Native American community. As the child gazes at Tonto, the character suddenly stirs and inquires if horses were brought along. The child, puzzled, responds with a question asking who they were mistaken for. Tonto then proceeds to recount a tale from long ago, describing a time when he and John, who wore a mask similar to the child's, were involved in a raid on a village and a bank heist. The child interjects, noting that they know the Lone Ranger and Tonto were not villains who robbed banks. Tonto explains that during that era, even good individuals had to disguise themselves before transporting the child back to 1869 in Texas. There, the town mayor, Mr. Cole, addresses locals about the significance of the railroad and encourages harmony between the Comanche tribes and settlers. To uphold justice, he plans to publicly hang the notorious criminal Butch Cavendish, with Captain Dan and his men standing by as they await the arrival of the train carrying Butch. Among them is John, Dan's sibling, returning to Texas to work as a prosecutor. On the train, a guard visits Butch to inform him that he will soon face execution at the hands of the mayor. Butch disdainfully regards the guard as Tonto, who has been captured, fiddles with his faulty watch nearby. Meanwhile, a gang of criminals lurk close by, plotting to rescue Butch from the train. In a daring move, Butch manipulates a piece of wood to retrieve a concealed gun, then requests to use the restroom. Subsequently, Butch overpowers and kills the guards. John, the observant one, spots a figure atop the train and begins pursuit. Butch's accomplices board the train, causing chaos by threatening passengers, killing the conductor, and accelerating the train. Amid the turmoil, Butch targets Tonto for elimination until John intervenes. Tonto then seizes a gun, confronting Butch with his faulty watch, seeking retribution for past injustices. However, John stops Tonto from seeking vengeance, opting to deliver Butch to face a just trial. Suddenly, Butch's henchmen appear behind John, providing Butch the upper hand to restrain John and Tonto before fleeing with their gang on horseback. The train misses its intended stop, prompting Dan and his rangers to hastily give chase. Tonto manages to break free from the wooden restraint but struggles due to the chain connecting him to John. In a bold move, he takes John and ascends the train to detach the carriages, ensuring the safety of the passengers. A bandit emerges, menacing them from atop the train. Just then, Captain Dan arrives on horseback, swiftly subduing the thief. They work together to separate the main carriage while John and Tonto stand atop it. Unfortunately, the train derails, throwing them near the wreckage. John trails after Tonto, aiming to return him to custody for his trial, but Tonto disregards him, walking ahead. Captain Dan intervenes, handing John handcuffs and leading Tonto back to jail. John arrives home to reunite with Rebecca, his brother's wife, whom he hasn't seen in nine years, along with his nephew Danny. Later, Danny observes Tonto in the jail cell, speaking in an unusual manner. Mr. Cole appears and meets John, instructing Captain Dan to apprehend Butch by any means necessary. Dan agrees to take Collins, the scout, to track down Butch. Before departing, Dan bids farewell to his family, entrusting John with his father's badge and deputizing him as a Texas Ranger. As they spot a white horse standing on the mountain, Dan shares with John that Native Americans hold this horse in high regard, calling it the immortal soul. Upon reaching a passage amidst the mountains, Dan tasks Collins with scouting the area to ensure the safety of their route. While Collins ventures off into the distance and signals that the path is clear, they enter the canyon. Dan questions Collins' whereabouts and soon realizes they have walked into a trap as gunfire rains down on his men from various mountain vantage points. Attempting to escape, Dan witnesses his brother fall to the ground and courageously returns to rescue him. However, he gets shot in the shoulder in the process. John rushes to aid his wounded brother, but gets hit and loses consciousness. In the meantime, Tonto arrives and prepares graves for Dan and his men, looting their belongings before burying them. John wakes up, but Tonto strikes him with a stone, causing him to lose consciousness once more. The white horse appears and stands by John's grave, prompting Tonto to intercede. Tonto asks the horse to bring back Dan, highlighting his prowess as a warrior. However, the horse insists on helping John instead. Tonto mounts the horse, rescues John, and tends to his injuries. As John awakens, he observes Tonto conversing with the white horse. Tonto conveys to John that the horse mentioned John has transformed into a spirit that cannot be killed at night. 
Tonto urges John to seek justice for his brother and comrades, presenting him with a mask. He explains that Butch believes John to be deceased, making it advisable for John to wear the mask. While Butch and his men, disguised in Native American attire, launch an attack on the village, resulting in numerous casualties, John arrives to find the area completely devastated. Tonto reassures him that all hope is not lost and that they must press on. John inquires about locating Rebecca and Danny, prompting Tonto to release a horse and propose following its lead. As they trail the horse, it tragically collapses and dies, halting their progress. While inspecting the horse, John is unexpectedly struck by an arrow. Upon regaining consciousness, he discovers himself among the Comanche tribe. The tribal chief questions John about his masked appearance, and John explains that Tonto advised him to wear it. The chief presents a watch and discloses that Tonto is a figure of great significance, recounting a tale from Tonto's childhood. In the past, the chief narrates, Tonto discovered two unconscious men lying outdoors and brought them to the village for recuperation. During their stay, the men noticed silver by the river, sparking intrigue. They inquired Tonto about the silver discovery, offering a pocket watch in return. Young Tonto guided them to the location of the silver, but the two men's greed led them to massacre the entire village. Their plan was to return and plunder as much silver as they desired without facing any resistance. Upon witnessing the devastation wrought upon his village due to his actions, the young Tonto vowed to avenge the village's destruction. Tonto recounted to John that his brother had pledged to protect the tribe's lands as long as they maintained peace. John revealed Dan's demise and assured that if they were released, he would honor his brother's commitment. However, the tribe's chief remained skeptical. They were then buried in the ground with their heads exposed. The white horse emerged to aid their escape from the pit. Tonto instructed John that they must journey to the river's source to confront Butch. At the river's source, Butch's men hesitated to enter a cave, citing the presence of an alleged malevolent spirit inside. Shortly after, John and Tonto propelled a minecart towards the entrance, engaging in a firefight. As they approached the cart, it suddenly exploded. John seized Butch and interrogated him about Rebecca and Danny. Butch revealed their unfortunate demise, sending John into a rage, prompting him to physically assault Butch with the gun. Later, John brought Butch to trial and handed him over to Mr. Cole. During a dinner invitation from Mr. Cole, he confessed to being Butch's brother and attempted to shoot John. John narrowly escaped. Returning to a previous event, John and Tonto broke into the bank to acquire explosives, which they strategically placed on the bridge to bring it down. Meanwhile, a celebration took place at the station. Tonto scaled the train carrying silver boxes and threatened the engineers. The train departed, causing chaos at the party venue as soldiers pursued and fired at Tonto. Mr. Cole, Butch, and Rebecca boarded a separate train to pursue Tonto. John arrives riding a white horse and leaps over the second train. Tonto then switches the train tracks, causing both trains to run parallel to each other. Mr. Cole spots John on the horse atop the train and instructs Butch to eliminate him. Butch takes Rebecca onto the train in front of John, who pleads for her release. Butch pushes her, but she lands safely on the white horse. John attempts to shoot Butch, but his gun is empty, leading him to physically assault Butch. John then descends to halt the train, only to find Butch holding his gun, declaring that their journey is at an end and John must perish. The train carrying silver crashes into the other train's trailer. John, with Rebecca on the white horse, flees, leaving Butch behind to meet his demise. Mr. Cole manages to escape with some silver-filled trailers, but Tonto emerges above them. Mr. Cole confronts Tonto and tries to kill him, prompting John, riding the horse, to shoot Mr. Cole and discard his weapon. Tonto picks up the gun, stating that he has long awaited this moment. When Mr. Cole questions his identity, Tonto hands him a watch, prompting Mr. Cole to recall the young Native American boy to whom he had given the watch to learn about the source of silver. Tonto releases the hook, causing Mr. Cole to plummet with the train full of silver stones from the collapsed bridge, sinking deep into the river beneath the train cart. John rushes to Tonto's aid to rescue him. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.